Um, my name's Halima, um, I'm from Nesta, and I'm going to talk to you about why we're interested in ageing and innovation, and also to trail a new paper that we're going to be publishing in the next month or so, and also a new programme of work that we're going to be launching next year. Um, the reason we've got a kaleidoscope, or an attempt at a kaleidoscope, up on my first slide is that we think actually one of the hallmarks of ageing is its diversity and its dynamism over time, and we really want to sort of retain that kind of sense of diversity in how we think about ageing in our programmes. Um, and at what we think actually we're at risk of is jumping from one old stereotype about ageing to a new stereotype about ageing. So currently often the image that appears in our minds when we think about ageing is kind of frail, incapacitated, quiet people in a care home. We're at risk of jumping straight from that to the kind of happy, shiny, hyper-wealthy baby boomers kind of cycling on a beach kind of thing. And both stereotypes are equally problematic and so we want to kind of retain a sense of the uh, granularity of ageing. So a bit about Nesta, we're, we're the UK's Innovation Foundation, we're a public foundation um, with a National Lottery Endowment and we're a hybrid organisation in that um, although we have foundation status we're also an investor, um, we're a think tank, we run our own practical innovation programmes and we also have a new emerging innovation skills curriculum platform which you might want to take a look at. Um, and in terms of what we're already doing in ageing, uh, we've recently launched, this is our front page this week, um, we've recently launched uh, a new impact investment fund, um, 17 million in total, of which one of the three strands of that is an ageing well strand. So some of you who are kind of in the market for investment might want to take a look um, and have a look and see whether you're sort of eligible to, to take a look at that. Um, we're also running an ageing well social challenge prize jointly with the Cabinet Office at the moment. Um, I'm running a, another innovation programme called People Powered Health, which is all about collaborative and social approaches to helping people live well with long-term conditions um, and we've done previous work on older social entrepreneurs so we've sort of been active in and around the aging space but the reason I'm here today is we're interested we're about as I said to launch some new work in the early in the new year the other thing I wanted to say about our approach is that a phrase that we use a lot at Nesta is social innovation and by that we mean innovation that is both social in its means and in, and in its ends. So um, innovations that by their very nature actually build social fabric and social value in how they're delivered at the same time as solving social challenges and we think ageing is a really good example of a field that desperately needs um, some social innovation. Um, and so we back for profit organisations, non-profit and public sector we're less interested in the kind of organisational form and more interested in whether they're achieving social impact and whether the public benefit outweighs the private benefit sufficiently. Um, lots of our work uses technology um, to sort of promote and um, facilitate social innovation, but uh, above all what we're interested in is, is this stuff going to improve people's lives and create social value? So in terms of our, the sort of bit of work that we've been doing in terms of rethinking ageing and also thinking about the connections between ageing and innovation, we think there are three big problems with how um, we're approaching ageing um, at the moment. The first is, arguably, I think we're using yesterday's tools for tomorrow's problems. So if we think about some of our kind of social institutions, our social concepts, we're actually created under completely different demographic and social conditions. So our whole um, idea of retirement feels increasingly out of date. And, and, uh, and out of touch. Um, our, our whole way of thinking about social care feels archaic, um, it's a failing model. Um, and healthcare, despite lots of people in the NHS saying that they're changing, actually the dominant model of healthcare is still built around um, combating infectious disease. It's not yet fully tackling uh, chronic conditions. So that's the first thing. We really need to rethink our social institutions and our social categories. The second issue is that we define ageing by what it's not, so it's not working, it's not having full cognition and we need to again turn that on its head, have a completely asset based approach to how we engage with ageing, mobilise older people, mobilise other generations to support older people and really work with the experience and the insights and the values that, that older people have. 
And lastly, we think we're failing to understand the nature of the ageing challenge. We think it's, in essence, a systemic issue. And by that, we mean that products um, are useful, devices are needed, but they're going to be insufficient to get us to where we need to be in terms of adapting with an ageing population. And I'll say a little bit more about that. And basically, we think there are lots of different types of change that we need simultaneously in order for us to basically shift the ageing system to where it needs to be. So we've just come up with a little schematic which we think kind of represents four of the domains of change that we need to address. So if we take the first one, product and service innovation. We do desperately need new devices, new products, new services, but we sense at the moment that there's, there's some good products coming onto the market, but they're basically still too small scale. There's, there seems to be a sort of massive missing market in the middle that uses low-cost pervasive technologies to enable people to age well. There's um, a lot of parts of the market seem quite stagnant, quite dominated by small numbers of companies, still kind of churning out big, beige, expensive devices basically aimed at the statutory sector. It feels like it needs a whole new set of entrants. Um, and that's linked to the market innovation point where we think there's, as Stephen said, we think there's this massive gap with, between what markets are providing and what older people want. And there's this kind of mismatch um, between supply and demand. We also need political change at the same time. Um, we think overall there's a lack of political leadership given the scale of the sort of changes that we can expect alongside an ageing population. And although there's plenty of policy activity going on, um, in essence it's some, it's sort of, in total it remains quite an incremental approach and we think we need some radical options instead. And then the last box is by no means the least. I think in some ways it's one of the most important ways in which we need to facilitate this change. And that's some very significant cultural innovation. So changes to our social norms about how we understand what ageing means. Um, changes to attitudes both from older people and towards older people in terms of discrimination. But also rethinking roles across generations. We think we need to rethink how we interact with one another. The extent to which we need a kind of new intergenerational social contract. There's big work to be done in terms of mobilising a kind of social movement for change that will sort of take us, um, take us through. And what we're interested in doing over the next few months is identifying some key systemic issues that basically straddle all four of these boxes and which can't be cracked, the solution can't be cracked, without change across these four different domains. So some stuff actually isn't systemic. Um, an individual company can take on inclusive design principles. They can just do that. We can all actually improve our own health behaviours. That's not a systemic issue. But there's some stuff, care is probably one of them, new forms of work, new models of work for the second half of life is probably another, that are, that are systemic in nature and require lots of different change. So that's just a sort of a quick outline of the sort of thinking that we're doing. In terms of next steps, there'll be a paper that's basically setting out a bit more detail of this argument that's going to be coming out um, hopefully before Christmas. Um, we're also interested in creating a living map of innovators in this space. So if you're an innovator and you want to get in touch, do drop us a line. Um, we're working out our kind of mechanism for how we're going to gather that information, but we want to kind of represent all of the dynamism, because one of our big arguments in the paper is going to be there's a mismatch between top-down kind of macro policy debates on ageing and then all the really exciting grassroots innovation that are emerging at the, at, at the bottom and we need to sort of link the two together. Um, and then we're going to be launching some new, some new work in the new year. So um, really good to be here. Do look forward to, to sort of talking with you uh, afterwards. Thank you. Thanks.